Um, okay, so for those of you who don't know, I was at Render ATL this week and I did a talk and I did a live coding of creating a Vue.js app with Ionic Framework and the plugin and um, the, the Visual Studio Code plugin. And I also added a plugin, the share plugin. It was just to show how quickly you can spin up an app with Ionic. And I promised the folks from the audience that I would make a video of it. And this is the video. So um, we get started by clicking on the uh, create new project. We're going to create a view project and we are going to create a tabs project. I think that's what we did. So click on tabs and we're going to put it. I already have created a directory called render ATL view. And so that's where we're going to put it. So I select that. And now the plugin is creating the project. These are all the commands that you would have to type in yourself to generate this project on your own. So that's why I strongly encourage you to download this plugin if you're using Visual Studio Code. Um, so let's let this run to get the basic project going. I'm not going to cut any, um, I'm not going to edit this so that you get some idea of the timing. This is, I'm running this on, you saw how quickly that happened. It's still going, so I'm running this on a, this isn't my older iMac. So this is an older 2017 iMac and that still ran pretty fast. I have an M1 that I work with daily, but this is my backup machine. All right, so we have created the project and then now let's um, click on web to kind of see what we get. And here, let me zoom this in. And this is your basic tabs application and you saw how quickly that spun up. But we're talking about building mobile applications here. So let's put that back and let's see the steps you need to go through to add um, a capacitor to this. So the first thing you need to do is you need to actually build the project because capacitor is gonna look for a distribution folder or a build folder. Um, in order for everything to work. So let's run build. And now the build's complete. So now that the build is complete, I'm, I can add the iOS project. So we're gonna add the iOS project to this. And so now it's adding the native iOS project. I think, let me kill my, let me stop my web application. We don't need that to try to compile as everything's changing. because you could see in the back it, as stuff was changing, it kept trying to reload the web server. So I turned that off. So now the iOS project has been added. And so now you have this iOS menu item here. And when you click this to start, it will allow you to, you see it's looking for devices. It will allow you to select the device. I'm gonna use this 14 Pro Max. So let's select that. And it's building everything. You can see it's copying everything from the disk folder. It's setting up capacitor configuration. It's updating any plugins. And so these are some default capacitor plugins. And now it's updating iOS. And it should start the process of trying to push it to a simulator on my device. And as you saw, this is a little bit older machine, so it's gonna take a little bit longer than it does on the newer machines. Actually, this machine is five, six years old. But it's, you know, I can't complain, it's still pretty fast. I haven't gotten rid of it yet because of the screen, I really like the screen. Okay, so it looks like, still building. It definitely is much slower than on my um, on my M2, but I can hear the engine chugging away. Let me see if I can try to help it out by, no, I'm just gonna let it run. I mean, it's probably a little bit longer this first time around because it needs to get the basic build done and generate uh, some files that I believe Xcode will cache on the next builds. 
So that's kind of what's going on. And then also it needs to spin up the simulator, but it's not even started up the Xcode yet. Well, no, it's a, it is running Xcode build, so it is running it. I think it's trying to get the simulator up because I had issues with the simulator er earlier. Let me see if I can get the simulator going. Oh, no, it looks like it's uh, it's moved over to deploying now. I can assure you it didn't take this long in the video, in the um, in the demo that I did. Like I said, I think this is a simulator problem because it should have spun up the simulator by now. Let me see if I could jump start this process. Oh, I know what's going on. Also, it's in the middle of indexing my server. I mean, indexing my uh, my computer, which is not good. See if there's a way for me to kill that because it's kind of ruining the whole demo. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know off the top of my head how to kill it, uh, so I won't mess with that. But that's why it took so long. It normally does not take this long to do a build. So now you can see it is running on device. This is our app. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, so now we have our app, and then now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a plugin. And so to add a plugin, we scroll down here to plugins. And if you click here, this is something that was recently added. It's a plugin repository that shows you all the plugins, capacitor, and Cordova plugins you can add to your application ways to filter the list and a couple of other things over here. Um, you could have some filter options and stuff like that. What we're going to do is we're going to use a share, the share plugin, which um, basically allows you to share content. It, it pulls up the share sheet for any applications that are on your device that you can share with. And so you just open this up and you click install. And that will install the plugin. And now the plugin is installed already. Let's take a quick look at, I never walked through the code, so let's take a quick look what happened. So we basically just installed a, a regular Vue.js project. When, and, and so we use the default template. So this is all the basic Ionic stuff, but you can see this looks like your normal Vue application. Um, this is all built with Vite. So you have your Vite config there. We have our app.js which actually is where we're going to kind of load up our plugin. Um, then you have the different views. You have the tab root, and then you have all different tab pages. And then you, of course, have your router with your nested routes to support the tabs. All right, so let's hop, uh, let's hop back to tab one, since that's where we are going to put in the plugin. So let's go to tab one. Let's get some more room here. Let's pull all this content stuff out because we don't need it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a button. Just call it share. And then down here, we need to make sure we add the ion component. So let's go in here, ion button. And we add the button here. Let's save that. And then we are not no longer using this component, so we can remove this, but we need a function. So we're gonna say const do share equals share. And then we want to use the um, Ionic component. So let's do import, import. I, I know this because I, I did the demo. Um, I wanna import share. And this is from 
capacitor share. There is this function called if, so we can say share, can share, and that is a function. So it lets you know if you can actually share, and I don't want that. It will just, oh, actually, I just recalled this is a promise. So let's take this out of here and let's do this. And we'll say can share result. And then we'll say can share here. We'll place the await in front like that. So we can get the result. And then down here, we say can share result. And I believe it's a ref, so we need to get the value. Let's add our async on top here. And then, so now we know we can share. Let's say this else. Alert. Cannot share. And then in here, we want to actually call do the share. And so we're say const share result. And once again, await and then share, share. And then share has some options and text is the text you want to share. Text I am sharing. And then let's share a URL. And so we'll share HTTP www.clearlyinnovative.com, which is the name of my company, my software development firm. All right, and then this will get our share result, and then the share result lets you know what activity you shared with, so if everything was fine. So what we'll do is if share result dot activity type, then alert shared to share result dot activity type. So then we'll know what application we shared it with. Otherwise we know there's an error. All right. So this looks okay. Um, I don't see any errors anywhere. So we're just going to try and oh, I don't want that be there. We're going to try and push this back over to the device. Um, oh, we need to connect this button here. So let's say click equals do share. So when we click on a button, it should share. We added our imports, our iron button. We have our new function. So let's see how this goes. So with the plugin, you just go back over here and you click play. It remembers the simulator that you use. So we'll just try to redeploy it back to that simulator. So let's look at what's going on down here. As you can see, it's rebuilding and it's going to try to push it back. So this is the um, JavaScript stuff getting packaged up in the disk folder that it's copied over. Plugins, update dependencies. It's going to build and it should push here to device. So there's a share button. We click the share, our share comes up. There's a URL, but we're, I don't have messages set up, so I can't share the messages. I don't have any other apps. So let's just share the reminders. So we click on reminders. You can see text I'm sharing. Here's a URL that's here. Let's add it. And then now it's saying that I shared to Apple reminder sharing extension. Okay. And then now That's not what I wanted oh, while using app. I want to fight, go to my reminders app. So let's close that. Let's close that. Where's reminders? Allow oh, while using app, continue and reminders. And here's the reminder that's been shared to my reminders. And uh, we tested the link. So let's click on the link. 
and the link is working and it is launching the application. So that's, that's what I wanted to show in this video. Um, I also will include a link in the description to the whole presentation. Um, thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like, subscribe to the channel and leave your comments below. Thanks and bye.